morning welcome to my bathroom um i'm gonna try and keep my dirty laundry in the corner out of it what a great background just my towel it's another episode of vlogtober and i thought that i would just do a very quick hair tutorial today so i've just done my makeup i've got day two hair as you can tell it's kind of sticking to my head despite the fact that i put like half a liter of dry shampoo in it because i've been doing this a lot lately the vintage hair and i feel like i'm getting kind of better at it so this is what I'm doing at the moment. Now, I do struggle with my hair holding a curl. So step one is getting a good side part going, getting it nice and straight, and then brushing it out a ton. My crown is just not working today. It's like really greasy. I'm using this, which I got from the supermarket. These are the hot rollers that I use. Yes, they have a little bit of toothpaste on them. No, I'm not gonna bother cleaning it because that's the kind of person I am. So these are from Remington, I believe and I got them off Amazon. Typically the way that I start this, I push my hair back behind my shoulders. This curl pattern works best with the side part. So from here, I'm gonna kind of part it above my ears. I show the back. It doesn't need to be a perfect sectioning. And then I'm just clipping it with a basic clip, but I will clip my fringe up with one of these little makeup clips so that that stays out of the way for now. What is attached to me? An eyebrow brush. She's beauty, she's grace, she's Miss United States. So if you're new to doing vintage style hair, which I sort of am, um, it's something that I've tried since my teens and just never really successfully gotten until recently. The thing that tipped me over the edge working out how to do a vintage curl properly was actually learning what a curl pattern is and how you can actually sort of study curl patterns that some people will be wearing by just looking at their hair. So if you look at the way that their curl forms, you can sort of gather a bit of an idea of their curl pattern. If you understand how a curl pattern works and what it does to your hair, you know what I mean? Go on Pinterest, look up vintage curl patterns and start learning them. And then from there, you should be able to adjust. The curl pattern that I like to do is kind of, I think it's kind of 1940s inspired. To be honest, I'm not a historian. I don't really know. What I like to use is this Wavell Professional setting lotion. This helps my hair actually hold a curl for more than two seconds. And I'm really liberal with it. I spray the crap out of my hair. You can make your own setting spray, which I've tried in the past. You can literally just make like simple syrup, what you would use in cakes and baking, which is sugar boiled in water and dissolved. And that makes a pretty good setting lotion. What I think a lot of people don't get about curl patterns is twisting your hair around and like it not setting the correct way, that all takes a bit of a toll. I remember even when I was in like university and high school, friends of mine asking how I cut my hair when I would do sort of like Utah waves and being like, oh, well, formerly known as beachy waves, which I now call Utah waves. No offense if you're from Utah. They'd be like, oh, I can never get my hair, my curls to sit nicely. And I was like, it's the way that you're holding the curling iron. So in this case, it's the way that you curl and hold and sit the roller. I found that it doesn't matter too much for the bottom ones, at least for the look that I like, which probably isn't the most like authentic look, TBH, but it looks pretty. So what a lot of people will do for their bottom of this cut pattern that I'm doing is you'll just separate your hair into two sections, one on the left, one on the right, and you'll take your biggest curl. This is the biggest curl that I have. And what I do is I kind of push it from the root all the way to the ends. And this is hard to see, but I'm kind of trying to roll it under itself without making it go backwards at the end. And then I keep my hands on the edge of the curler here and I roll all the way up. And sometimes a little bit will fall out. You can either add that back in um, or you can go put it in the other side or you can go back over with a curling iron later which is usually what I do. And see how my hair kind of grows. I want to say it grows out of my head at like this angle. That's how I want to roll the curler. The curler should sit at this not quite 45 degree angle. Without looking at my drop rule, I have zero idea what angle is what. I'm gonna saturate that a little more so that that will hopefully hold a little more. So this is how the curl pattern works. You have two going kind of back and under and then we're going to move on to the second part of the hair a part around my eyebrow line like the ends of my eyebrows roughly there and then also 
The fringe is kind of its own section, and that is if you have like an actual fringe or not, or bangs if you're American. So this part is slightly different. This is gonna go in towards the face. So you're gonna get like a sort of triangular section, and you're gonna use the next side down in roller that you have. It could be different depending on your hair type. You might want to use a slightly different size of roller depending on how you want it to frame your face, but this is what I do. If you have what I like to call sad white girl hair, maybe this will give you a little more volume. I have sad white girl hair, so I can say it. This is where that angle is important again. So pull, so pull the hair out. This should be sitting parallel to the face. And then at the very end, you can twist it back down to that kind of 45. You want to do that on the other side as well to make them even. But the point here is that you twisted these ones under with a little bit of a backward angle. You twisted these ones forward with very much a side angle. And I'm going to continue to use this medium size roller for these pretty much until I get to the crown of my head. Okay, so I've taken my fringe out so that I can start my fringe. And the way that I do my fringe is sort of in two sections. Essentially what I want it to do is I want it to go really hard to this side. So we put a ton of setting spray in it. As per usual, we comb that through. And for my fringe, I use my smallest roller. Now, see how I'm started to bend this back? This is because this is on the top and you really don't want to get kinks on the top. I'll be honest, a little bit of messiness. It's not the end of the world, or at least I haven't found it so. What's more important is getting these angles correct and getting the roller to sit in a way that won't give you <laughs> that won't give you kinks. This is one area in life in which I do kink shame. A little more setting spray. Okay, now we've just got this very top section of hair. Splitting these into it again. And I'm gonna go back in with those red colors. I'm really saving the big ones for the very top of my head to try and get the most volume I possibly can. And now this one, same deal. Going down, combing it out, combing the setting spray through. Push that forward as you comb it. Really push it forward from the root. Flattening. It's probably the best demo there. Getting that really flat. And hook her in. And then this one is gonna follow that same pattern. And then this one's really just catching a few strays. So this is how the curl pattern is currently sitting. And now I'm gonna wait about an hour before I come back and brush it out. So my hair has now been sitting in the rollers for about an hour. And it's time to take them out and see what we got. Okay, this level of curl is absolutely what you want. See, this is what I mean. I always get this like longer part down here. I don't know. Anyway, this level of curl is absolutely what you want. You want to look mildly insane. And basically from here, you're just going to start brushing the curls out. I mean, where it needs it, but mostly from the underside of my hair and kind of like cut my hand. I'm pulling a face like I'm in pain, but I'm really not. This is just my hair doing face. As you start to brush them out, you look less insane. The setting spray is gonna be a little crunchy. This is not the hairstyle for people who love a good, soft, bouncy hair. It takes a lot of brushing and I kind of want mine to flip under at the end like that. Um, so that's sort of the way that I'm brushing out. Okay, so this is essentially what I like. A little bit of a Flick in the fringe, some nice shape at the bottom. Not like overly styled, but it definitely gives that vintage kind of feel. And I've got very few kicks. From here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start spraying it. And I'm kind of like holding my hand under it to keep that shape. I tend to get real like helmety on the head because I have super dead straight hair that doesn't want to do anything. The way that I like to do this is pull up something from my crown, brush it up a little, and then just start back combing like crazy. 
molding it around. Okay, and obviously on this side too. Another thing you can do is you can kind of, let's say, pull this top section up, clip it, give this a bit of a brush, give the bottom a bit of a spritz. And then to get some more volume in the sides, back comb this, but only back comb the underneath because you need smoothness on top. And then. I change the pressure so that it's like my hand is super light when I'm doing that part and then here I'm going pretty hard to be honest and then I want this to go under more and normally the way I wear it is kind of behind one ear personally this is the way that I kind of like to style it and this is what it looks like after it's fallen out oh, a couple hours later it's giving mommy buy me a house <laughs> 